Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Books for Us. We'll just get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about The Wall by John Lanchester. Since this is our first time, let's talk about what this is going to be. Uh, I'm just going to say whether or not I recommend a book. I'm going to give you the summary and I'm going to read a little bit from it. And that is it. After the podcast, you can contact me. I'll put the information below. And if you are the first one to do it, I will send you the book. And then hopefully you will send the book to the next person and the next person. There will be some terms. If I am going to send you the book, I, you know, there are specific rules that I'd like you to follow. One being you cannot sell it. That's not cool. If I send you a book, it's because I want you to read it and then give it to someone else. I don't want you to hoard it or sell it. I love fiction and I love to share the fiction that I like with you guys and hopefully you share it with each other. So that is the idea here. Uh, like I said, if you email me for this book, we will talk and work out the specifics. But I will include the email below. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Like I said, The Wall by John Lanchester. Uh, I just finished this yesterday. I will rank each book. The lowest praise for me being Decide for Yourself. Then next up, Recommend. Then Highly Recommend. And then Holy Crap, you have to read this right now. And of those, I would rank The Wall Highly Recommend. This is about a world that has been flooded to the point of almost being uninhabitable. The main character, Kavanaugh, Joseph Kavanaugh, lives in the UK where everyone has to take a turn at the wall, which was built around the UK to keep both the floodwaters and other people out so they could keep their own resources going. So Joseph Kavanaugh is tasked for two years with standing on the wall for 12 hour shifts, two weeks on, two weeks off. And they are not allowed to let any others in if an other, anybody outside the wall, if an other gets in on anybody's watch, they are liable to be sent out to sea as an even exchange of people. So if, if seven people get over, seven people will be held responsible and sent out to sea. I, I'm not going to explain too much more. I am just going to quickly read a bit of an excerpt just a little bit from the beginning i do not have permission from john lanchester i nor from norton books i that i'm not promoting selling whatever i i just think i like this book and maybe you will too and maybe you can send it to someone else who listens uh anyway so here we go a little bit of the wall by John Lanchester. It's cold on the wall. That's the first thing everybody tells you, and the first thing you notice when you're sent there, and it's the thing you think about all the time you're on it. And it's the thing you remember when you're not there anymore. It's cold on the wall. You look for metaphors. It's cold as slate, as diamond, as the moon. Cold as charity, that, that's a good one. But you soon realize that the thing about the cold is that it isn't a metaphor. It isn't like anything else. It's nothing but a physical fact. This kind of cold, anyway. Cold is cold is cold. That's the first thing that hits you. It isn't like other cold. This is a cold that is all about the place, like a permanent physical attribute of the location. The cold is one of its fundamental properties. It's intrinsic. So it hits you as a package. The first time you go to the wall, on the first day of your tour. You know that you were there for two years. You know that it's basically the same everywhere as far as the geography goes, but that everything depends on what the people you will be serving with are like. You know that there's nothing you can do about it. It is frightening, but also in its way a little bit freeing. No choice. Everything about the wall means you have no choice. You get a little training, but not much, six weeks. Mainly, it's about how to hold, clean, look after, and fire your weapon. In that order. Some fitness training, but not much. 
a lot of training and midnight awakening, sleep disruption, sudden panic, sudden changes of order, small hours, test of discipline. They drum that into you. Discipline trumps courage. In a fight, the people who win are the ones who do what they're told. It's not like in the films. Don't be brave. Just do what you're told. That's pretty much it. The rest of the training happens on the wall. You get it from the defenders who have been there longer than you. Then in your turn, you give it to the defenders who come after. So that's what you arrive able to do. Get up in the middle of the night and look after your weapon. You usually arrive after dark. I don't know why, but that's just how they do it. Already you've had a long day to get there. Walk, bus, train, second train, truck. The truck drops you off. You and your rucksack are left standing there in the cold and the blackness. There is the wall in front of you, a long, low, concrete monster. It stretches into the distance. Although the wall is completely vertical, when you stand underneath it, it feels as if it overhangs, as if it could topple over onto you. You feel leaned on. The air is full of moisture, even when it isn't actually wet, which it often is, either with rain or with sea spray splashing over the top. It isn't usually windy, immediately behind the wall, but it sometimes is. In the dark and the damp, the wall looks black. The only path or sign or hint for what you should do or where you should go are a flight of concrete steps. They always drop you near the steps. There's a small light at the top in the guardhouse, but you don't yet know that's what you're looking at. Instead, what you mainly think is that the wall is taller than you expected. Of course you've seen it before in real life and in pictures, maybe even in your dreams. That's the one thing you learn on the wall, that lots of people dream about it long before they're sent there. But when you're standing at the bottom looking up and you know you're going to be there for two years and that the best thing that can happen to you in those two years is that you survive and get off the wall and never have to spend another day of your life anywhere near it, then it looks different. It looks very tall and very straight and very dark. It is. The exposed concrete stairs look steep and slippery. They are. It looks like a cold, hard, unforgiving, desperate place. It is. You feel trapped. You are. You are longing for this to be over, longing to be somewhere else. You would give anything not to be here. Maybe, even if you're not religious, you say a prayer. Out loud or under your breath, it doesn't matter because it doesn't change anything, because your prayer says, please, please, please let me get off the wall. And yet there you are on the wall. You start up the steps. You've begun your life on the wall. Yeah, so that was the first few pages of The Wall by John Lanchester, as I've said. Uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend this. It's, uh, it's pretty high praise <laughs> uh, for, for me. I can be kind of snobby when it comes to books. I, I won't get into anything else critically because I want you to decide for yourself and then we can talk about it. But yeah, like I said, if you're interested, please reach out to me and I will send it to you. And then you can send it to the next person and we'll get a little community going on, always sending books to each other. And I, I think it'll be nice. I think it'll be a way to stay together and to have some connection during this time of isolation. And yeah, reach out if you have any questions. I will include the email below. Thank you for listening to the first Books for Us. Hopefully you tune in next time. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day.